Okay, perfect. It should be recording now. I think so, as far as perfect. I can tell. Yeah. Okay, so welcome to this um, uh, defense of uh, Zita's master's thesis. My name is Tobias Gala. I'm the chair of this meeting. And the first item is for Zita to present her work uh, in a reasonable amount of time. <laughs> um, so go ahead, the screen is yours. Do you want to try sharing slides, I assume? <coughs> Right. I can see that. Um, one moment. You ready? Uh, don't or? You see it? Yes. As far as I can tell, this is all fine. So are you ready to, to go or? Um, yes. OK, then uh, go ahead. OK, so uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here today. Uh, I am Zita Sabu and uh, this is my uh, master thesis defense. I'm presenting my master thesis uh, titled Nonlinear Transitions in Air Transport Delays, Models and Data. Um, in um, the past few months, I have immersed myself um, in exploring the dynamics of uh, these um, air traffic delays uh, with the guidance of Dr. Massimiliano Zanin. So um, um, air transport um, stands uh, as uh, an important uh, element uh, in global connectivity, international relations, and um, in tourism. Um, so um, flight delays uh, have a serious uh, impact, um, not just um, on the um, traveler experience, but um, it has an effect, uh, a negative effect uh, on um, airline industries and on the economy as well. So here are some um, some of those uh, negative effects. Also, uh, I made a painting because I was so inspired <laughs> of this topic. Um, and uh, the objective uh, of uh, my uh, thesis uh, would be uh, examine um, these uh, flight um, delays. Um, considering the um, different traffic volumes, um, which uh, will be um, mm, investigated uh, in the context um, of uh, different uh, flight delay volumes, uh, thanks to the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So here, what um, what I will uh, do at first. Um, I uh, will uh, give a better understanding in an introduction um, where I give an overview of uh, air transport system and modeling flight delays. Um, then uh, I will introduce the data sets uh, that uh, were used um, in uh, this study and present um, the main properties and the fitting distributions. Then um, I will um, discuss um, which uh, distribution gave the best fit on the data. And uh, this is the non-central student T distribution. Um, I will um, introduce an optimization algorithm to, um, to get to know uh, how uh, the traffic volumes can be presented in the parameters of the previous distribution. Then uh, I will uh, discuss some um, results and uh, make um, some conclusions and uh, give a comprehensive uh, summary about this study. So uh, here um, we can uh, see that the uh, aviation system is a very complex uh, issue to uh, investigate because it uh, encompasses more uh, functionalities and applications at all. Um, so it makes uh, different aspects um, to be modeled. Um, we are interested in the um, 
air traffic uh, system. So um, I choose a representation, a representation of um, an air traffic uh, network um, to get a better understanding. Um, here the nodes uh, are referring to um, the airports and the uh, links are the flights between them. Then um, as um, the problem is of uh, flight delays uh, is really complex problem that uh, involves um, more um, causes um, that can be, uh, um, for example, uh, weather conditions or technical issues or um, traffic in other in our case, uh, which means um, the number of daily flights. Um, also, uh, it has uh, different prediction techniques, for example, uh, made by uh, data analyzing or um, in machine learning and um, why uh, do we choose a uh, traffic for this study uh, because um, traffic um, values uh, if they are high uh, they can uh, lead to the uh, saturation of uh, airports where um, even uh, minor disturbances can um, cause um, delays and uh, delay propagation and um, to uh, examine these uh, different traffic volumes um, we can use um, the uh, COVID-19 season where um, this, uh, uh, this traffic was um, reduced. So uh, here um, I um, introduced the two uh, data sets that were used uh, in this study. Um, this um, includes uh, flights uh, from uh, Europe and uh, from the American um, region. And um, I have um, the daily uh, data for each day, um, which um, contains um, flights for each uh, rows. And um, it has uh, the six columns as the departure and landing airports, which is given by their uh, IKO. Um, codes for the European data and the uh, IATA uh, codes for the US data. Uh, we have aircraft type, operation airline, and landing delay and departure delay, where the delays um, are given by the differences of the scheduled and the um, real um, times. Um, we have the data um, between 2015 and 2023. Then um, here um, I discuss uh, some, some main properties uh, of this data. Um, what I have to mention is that um, the huge uh, data size uh, required uh, a large computational effort um, during uh, the analysis and other processes. Um, and um, the uh, landing uh, delay on average uh, were um, lower than the average departure delay, um, which uh, can be due to how uh, the airlines give um, the uh, original landing shadows. Um, and um, in the following, um, I'm analyzing uh, data. On the first uh, two um, uh, figures, uh, we can uh, see uh, how the traffic fluctuates uh, over the time period we have. Um, as uh, in summer, we have higher values. Um, and uh, we can see the drop um, in the traffic uh, in 2020 uh, due to the COVID season. And in general, uh, for the US data, we have less flights. Then um, we have uh, here um, the uh, average daily delays for the same time, where we can see this uh, drop again in 2020. And uh, at the end, um, as uh, I uh, try to um, make uh, less computational time, I uh, analyzed if I can take um, a specific number of the mass busy airports, but um, as the standard deviation of the average delays don't show any patterns, um, at the end I use the whole data. Um, here I have some uh, further analysis um, between uh, traffic and other quantities. I also uh, fitted the quadratic polynomials for uh, each um, figure and uh, 
on the left side, uh, I'm discussing the um, the terms like the quadratic, linear, and uh, constant terms. Uh, from the first uh, two figures, we can see how the average delay um, is growing uh, while uh, traffic is increasing too. We have this positive trend for the number of delayed flights, where we take the delayed flights uh, over uh, 15 minutes of delay. But um, when uh, we are examining uh, only the um, the delays of these uh, delayed flights, then uh, we cannot uh, see this uh, positive trend anymore, which suggests uh, that um, traffic has a larger effect on uh, shorter delays. Then here we have the frequency diagrams uh, of the two uh, data sets. Um, what we can see that the European data is more symmetrical, more normal-like, uh, by the US data um, is more asymmetric and uh, it uh, means that it has uh, more flights with uh, extreme high delays. Then um, to find the best fit, I made the uh, histograms of the data. I fitted uh, 14 uh, different um, distributions and the lowest error was given by the location scan on central student D distribution, um, which um, I introduced um, here. So um, this uh, distribution uh, is uh, separated uh, by um, a standard normally distributed variable and uh, variable distributed by the key square distribution, which involves the gamma function. I have uh, two important parameters here. The uh, C is the non-centrality parameter and K is the degrees of freedom. Then uh, as I use the location scale version, uh, it's defined here. Um, here um, I uh, show uh, the parameters of the previous fits on the old data sets, uh, where uh, degrees of freedom refers to a tail heaviness. When it's uh, growing, we are reaching the um, normal uh, distribution. Um, the non centrality is referring to an asymmetry. Um, the location um, means uh, the peak of the uh, distribution and the scale is referring to a standard deviation. And um, as uh, I will uh, do processes with the uh, daily data, I made, um, I went through the daily fits too, where the um, average error was um, in order to, in order 10 to the minus five. Then um, this is a process um, I uh, introduced. Um, I use this uh, dual annealing optimization algorithm to find find uh, the best um, way um, to show how traffic volumes can be presented in the parameters of the previous um, distribution. Um, it's inspired by a physical process and it's uh, dual because it's working on um, variable and temperature space. It uses a distorted coach Lorentz distribution and um, makes an object objective or cost function for every iteration that we want to minimize. Um, we can um, accept results with an acceptance probability, uh, what is depending on the artificial temperature, what is changing over the process too. Um, before showing the results, um, I also had to uh, make some optimization setup. I defined parameters um, here. Um, each uh, parameter um, I separated uh, to have a traffic independent uh, part, which is the alpha, and the linear traffic dependent part, which is the beta. Then I set the boundaries for these parameters, initial guesses, and uh, gave um, maximum number of iterations to have acceptable results, but uh, in um, less um, time. And uh, then I choose an object infraction or error function to minimize. And um, this is the um, the maximum, uh, the absolute maximum um, difference uh, between the cumulative distribution functions. So after the um, optimization for uh, selected 20 days, um, including low and high uh, traffic volumes, um, I got uh, these um, traffic dependent uh, beta parts um, 
they are um, on the order of 10 to the minus uh, 5, which, which is uh, multiplied by uh, traffic. It's not uh, negligible. Then uh, I have some results uh, for the European data. Uh, on the left, uh, we can see how the fits um, gives uh, back well uh, the original uh, data means, but um, also uh, the um, optimization process can uh, give um, good um, solutions. And um, if I take um, the four parameters separately, then um, I uh, I can uh, observe uh, larger differences, but um, mm, a combination of them uh, can um, lead to an acceptable solution. And uh, if we look at the location and scale uh, parameters, um, there are um, lower variations um, that refers to a better symmetry in the whole European data, what we already observed. And um, to illustrate uh, how well the optimization can give uh, the distribution of the fits, um, I made uh, synthetic uh, data using uh, these parameters. And um, as the number of um, the uh, variable, um, I, uh, I used uh, the average uh, daily traffic and the largest uh, difference between the two um, probability density function um, there was uh, on the order of 10 to the minus 3. So um, it gave an acceptable solution. Then um, I um, made the same processes for the US data. And um, here what we can see that uh, there are some larger differences um, between the original means and the fitted or optimized means. And um, it can um, be observed at um, the uh, large or extreme uh, mean values. Um, and uh, what, as we can see, is that um, there is a larger variance in the location and the scale parameters that is uh, referring um, to the shape as it uh, less uh, likely a normal shape. And um, if we look uh, at uh, this distribution, uh, we can uh, see the same. Like we had uh, a low uh, negative uh, location, but the positive mean that can happen because we have a large uh, non-centrality value that makes uh, um, more heavy uh, right there for the distribution. And again, uh, we have um, a low uh, error value here. That means that optimization uh, worked. And at the end, I have some uh, extended results where I wanted to check um, whether it's working without um, the um, without taking the good uh, traffic values or not. And um, what I did is um, keeping the traffic from the first day and uh, adding uh, days. Um, so optimizing uh, the first and the first two, then the first three and so on um, number of days. And uh, what I get for the whole European data, that um, the average error was still uh, small, but a bit larger. And uh, when I look uh, at uh, how can it um, give back the um, fitted parameters, I can see that uh, the new solutions are um, limited by the results uh, from the previous days. And uh, looking at the two days of the US data, I uh, can see an even larger error value. And um, what uh, I can see more that is it is unable to give back the pattern and uh, cannot uh, simulate the daily distribution separately if we don't use the correct traffic um, volumes. So here I have some uh, conclusions. Um, we were examined the dependency of landing delays on traffic. Um, Thanks to the um, traffic um, anomalies uh, due to the uh, COVID-19 restrictions, then um, we had uh, in general that traffic has a larger influence on uh, short-term delays. 
um, I utilized the location scale version uh, of the North Central Student City distribution and applied the dual annealing optimization algorithm to um, examine the daily flight delays. Then, um, as a result, the optimization uh, couldn't uh, fully recover the parameters, um, but um, provided acceptable results for modeling an average daily delay. And um, in uh, high traffic scan areas, as uh, we saw for the European uh, data, uh, delays uh, could follow um, a normal like uh, distribution, but um, for low traffic uh, periods, it uh, exhibited more variable and extreme delays as for the um, US data. Um, and uh, some uh, suggestions for future uh, applications. Um, we could include more uh, data or um, um, data from other major aviation regions, for example, as China, to um, see a more global perspective. And um, then we could use um, more um, influencing factors, uh, for example, weather conditions, to develop synthetic models. Thank you for your attention. OK, thank you. Um, so it's now time for questions. And 